morning morning guys welcome to farm business east africa my name is anthony and today i'm in mala mala in this in uh, machakos county i'm at uh, amago dopa stud now here they rare dopa for breeders and i've uh, got an opportunity to come learn uh, with the best and i'm bringing you along Hope. So this is one of the the herds. This the, is the flocks. One of the flocks, no. but it's three groups. Okay. Yeah, three separate groups, which are with the three separate rams. Okay. So if you check on the nape of the the necks, yes, they have some color. Yeah, they have been marked. Yeah. yeah. There's this one who has green. Mm -hmm. There's this one who has blue. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are some who are just uh, who have no color at all. Yes. Yeah. So that. When we when they come back from now from grazing in the evening, mm -hmm. they will join uh, the, their their male will join them. Okay. Yeah. What parameters did you use to mm -hmm. determine who is ready? Um, if it is anything that uh, that is born here, yes. Then uh, the parameters is that uh, she has to be between 11, 11 months to a year. Yes. Yeah. Oh, it has be... to be that age. Yeah. So the body size is not a factor. Body size is a factor okay. of uh, of that, yeah, because yes. uh, some of them can have uh, small body sizes, yes. so you can leave those uh, the ones with much smaller bodies to about uh, sixteen months. Okay. Yeah, but these ones uh, generally um, uh, up to about a year, and majority of them by the time they get to a year, they are they are fully mature. Oh, they are ready for. Yeah, they are ready for 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 a ram. Okay. Yeah, and, and at least uh, they are they are, they are, they are mature enough. Okay. Yeah, to be able to, when they, they lamb down, to be able to take care of the lamb. Okay. If you do it uh, just because of the, 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 the size of the, the animal, mm -hmm. and it's not uh, mature in terms of age, mm -hmm. then uh, most times they abandon the, the babies and then that becomes a bottle baby. Yeah. These have already been flushed. Yeah. Uh, um, we already put in the, the, the guy with the, with the mating the apron. Teaser, eh? teaser yeah, the teaser ram. The teaser ram. Yes. Yeah, so that uh, he can just ensure that uh, they're on heat. And it also helps them to get on heat also. Yes. Yeah. So because of now smelling that, uh, the, the, the ram effect, smelling the ram. Yes. So they, they also go on heat. So, uh, so this is a Lusan Napa. Yeah. This, this is, is a Lusan. Yeah. Um, it takes uh, three months to establish. Mm -hmm. And then uh, once you get get to see the the, the flowering, eh, mm -hmm. that's when we harvest it. It's and really at that hard. point is uh, when it's at its highest um, uh, protein, protein content, yeah? Yeah. So we harvest it uh, about every 45 days. 45 days. Yeah, every 45 days, and then uh, we wilt it, and then uh, after that, that's what we we use to supplement them or uh, make for them uh, their their feed, depending on where they are in their life cycle, yes. as in the production cycle. Uh, yeah, and that is cut and carry. Yeah? You you don't uh, silage it or bale it for for um, for storage. No, we just uh, cut, and then uh, once it's wilted. We'll cut it up again, yeah. Uh -huh. Store it, and then uh, now, depending on how much you require yes. for, for each individual group, uh -huh. is now what you weigh out and uh, and use. What, what? How are you storing it? Um, in the in the barn. Yeah. So like right now, since it's uh, it's raining, yeah, mm -hmm. would prefer just uh, you cut it mm -hmm. and then now move it so that uh, it dries when it's there, oh, and just okay. uh, let the rain do its job. Yes. And uh, let it grow. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you don't have to like bale it or store it in a no. as in a silage form. No. no, this is the, the South African flock. Eh? Mm -hmm. So what I'll just uh, give you an example for mm -hmm. what you look for, mm -hmm. and uh, because uh, I told you that um, doing multiples mm -hmm. is a matter of genetics and feeding. Eh? Yes, yes. Now these two boys, mm -hmm. yeah, when they were born, mm -hmm. the the history that I have for them mm -hmm. is that uh, they were born as a multiple. Oh, these two. Him and, oh, uh, him. and the other one that's just yeah. there. Yeah, okay. those two mm -hmm. are have that uh, gene for for multiples. Yes. Yeah. So if you have that, then uh, you make sure that uh, when you're matching them up to, to the females, yes, you look for a female who will be able to 
who's able to carry who's twins. To but carry all twins. of them are able to carry twins. Okay. Yeah. Just make sure that you feed them well. Okay. So when you you you, you say feed them well, mm -hmm. what exactly should I include in in, in my ration? Your ration just um, uh, when you're flushing, just mm -hmm. make sure it have it has more energy and more protein. More energy, yeah. more protein. More energy, more protein. Because what you're trying to the, the what you're, what you're trying to simulate in the in the mind of the the animal mm -hmm. is that uh, you are well taken care of, you're well fed. Yes. So it's it's okay for you to produce more okay. because the the lambs and the, their mothers stay for the moment. Eh? Yeah, they might be a little bit messy, but uh, yeah. It's rainy season, eh? Yeah. So at at about ten days, we start them on uh, on creep feed. Eh? Okay. And the reason why you start them on creep feed early is uh, so that you you can already start preparing them for weaning, which is going to happen much later on. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And uh, because you you plan out the you're planning out your animals yeah? because mm -hmm. this is a you're looking for production. You're just not uh, doing this for the sake of uh, just uh, having animals. Mm -hmm. You're doing this as a business. Yes. Yeah. So your business is producing lambs. Yes. Yeah. And to produce lambs means that these animals need to learn how to eat mm -hmm. yeah so that you can put the mothers back into into production mm -hmm. production means that uh, joining with the with the ram and um, and feeding them and getting more babies okay. so at this stage eh, mm -hmm. uh, you're at a point where you're trying to decide which animal stays in your farm and which to be will be a cull later yeah so what exactly are you looking for when uh, deciding what to keep and what to sell? Okay, when it comes to uh, what to keep, eh, mm -hmm. generally it will be a female. Yeah, yes. because uh, females are what, what produce and they will add on to your, your flock. Okay. So now you're looking, uh, you're looking at length, mm -hmm. you're looking at uh, her posture already yes. and what uh, she already looks like. Mm -hmm. So if she has a good posture, like uh, there's one who's here, she's right here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She has a good length, yes. good posture. Mm -hmm. When she grows up mm -hmm. and when she gets much bigger, yes. then that is, what, uh, that is what you're looking for. And you want them to um, mature quickly. Yes. Yeah. Ah, okay. So uh, I'm looking at Pam. Mm -hmm. uh, you see the black head? Yeah. Pam is not, not like, fully like black. this one, yeah. So is, is, that a, is that something that I should be... As a farmer, should be worried about. No, yeah. no, that is just a uh, coloring, mm -hmm. so it uh, it shouldn't worry you. Okay. It shouldn't worry you at all. So it's a, it's still a pure. Yeah, they're, they're not. Uh, there's there's this thing I, I I hear people saying about uh, pure pure. Yes. Yeah, it's uh, it's about the breed. Yeah, uh -huh. what you have here, some of them are born from uh, Baba South Africa, Mama South Africa, mm -hmm. and others who are born from uh, the local local EU in the Baba South Africa. Ah. So you have that integration. And the reason for having that integration with the, with the local Kenyan uh, EU mm -hmm. is that uh, that animal gets uh, the hardiness, yeah? And the, the disease resistance, yeah? Not from the mother. Okay. But it also gets now the genetics, yeah? In terms of growth rate from, from the father. Okay. Yeah. So Ben. Yes. How are you? I'm doing well. You're doing a wonderful, wonderful job, man. Thank you, I'm thank so you, thank you, Tony. Yes. What we wanted to do here at Amago Dopers is to create what we refer to as a model farm. Yes. Where we disseminate knowledge. Yes. As much as we can. Mm -hmm. You know, because at the end of the day, what we saw in the market is that there's a gap. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. one may be able to buy the animal, but then what next? Mm -hmm. Especially from an animal husbandry point of view, mm -hmm. and just general taking care of the sheep yes yeah and that's where we decided let's open our gates mm -hmm. normally on a tuesday and a saturday on appointment yes you can come in we take you through uh a to z in terms of doper management mm -hmm. the nutritional side of it mm -hmm. uh proper husbandry how do you handle them yes then we discuss a bit about the record keeping mm -hmm. and also look at what are the market opportunities out there yes yeah and of course what's also important right now is the reproduction how do you put in the structures in place to make mm -hmm. sure your farm mm -hmm. is able to produce optimally mm -hmm. and to be able to meet any desired objectives that you may have yes. for your farm now so the, the this kind of uh, 
thinking. Yes. It came from uh, you visiting other farms. Mm-hmm. And uh, you, you decided that you would want that. Like yes. I, I saw a video you did about a year ago. Yes. About uh, your visit to, to SA. Yes. Uh, you went and uh, you did this course. You interacted with other farmers. You obviously visited a few other farms. Yes. Uh, you stole some ideas. Yes. But most importantly, you thought it twice to bring what you saw there. Mm-hmm. Package it in a way yes. that is palatable to, to the farmer. Yes. You didn't stop there. Yes. You went ahead and invited uh, an expert. Correct. A guru in the industry. Yes. And just at a fraction of the cost that it took you. Correct. To go travel all the way to the USA. Correct. Now it's here. Yes. So tell us a little bit of, about uh, the upcoming uh, conference. So we'll be holding the DOPA conference and training. Yes this month on the 23rd and the 24th yes and basically this is a very very good opportunity Mm -hmm. for any beginning farmer experienced farmer or just someone who's in the middle you know yes you've been trying it out you're not too sure Mm -hmm. because we will be having an array of industry leaders and experts yes in various categories mm-hmm. one will have phil rollings here mm-hmm. phil rollings is arguably one of the best judges and inspectors of dopers around the world yes uh, as we speak he has just come back from mexico mm-hmm. and uh, i've just requested him tafadali buona rollings come down pass by yeah. two days mm-hmm. yeah be with us just share with us your knowledge yes and also at the same time we'll have some industry experts mm-hmm. de- talking to us about nutrition yes reproduction mm-hmm. which is also very important yes disease and pest control mm-hmm. and market opportunities yes once you grow your dopper what can you do with it yes. especially from a marton lamp point of view yes you know where do we take where is the soko mm-hmm. so we'll have some of the off takers mm-hmm. coming to talk to us as farmers and showing us where the market is yes yeah so and of course at the end of the day it's a networking opportunity for each and every other farmer out mm-hmm. there yes. to come and know who who is the other doper farmer yes, yes. in your county not like in your county yes. and share knowledge because at the end of the day i mean we're in a very very good situation yes i must say at doper farmers mm-hmm. first location as a country mm-hmm. very close to the middle east Currently, from a consumption point of view, we cannot even meet the demand locally. Locally, yeah. So it's one of those things that you look at it and you say the opportunity is big. Mm-hmm. All we just need to do is double down, put our heads down, yes. focus, mm-hmm. and grow. So I would invite each and every farmer out there, beginning, yes. in the middle, experienced farmer, please register for the course. We still have a few slots open. Yes. Please come. We'll have the theory side of it, which we'll be holding it at... Uh, a hotel very near the farm mm-hmm. then the practicals will be having them here yes, at amago doppers yes, yes. Farm. and for the viewers uh, I'll, I'll link the i'll do a post yes and, uh, and i'll link uh, the, the contact and uh, ben's channel yes at the description box yes so ben what is is what is that that brought you into doppers uh i must say for 11 Dopers, years ago when it was just a dream for dopers, it was more of stumbling into it. Okay. Uh, my first love was cattle, beef cattle. Okay. You started okay. with beef. And uh, slowly I started interacting as you interact with other farmers mm-hmm. and in many different benchmarking uh, trips, mm-hmm. came to see the doper. Okay. And I must say, like every other farmer out there, once you see the doper, you can't stop you know, ha- having a fancy for the doper. Yes. Especially from a, you know, a commercial production point of view. And from that point, uh, 11 years ago, we started now looking at what can we do with these doppers? Yes. Yeah. How can we produce? Because quickly we noticed the market is there for Nyama. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now the challenge was the doppers we had at that point were taking us about a year, three months to get to yes. a carcass weight of about 15, 17 kilos. Yeah. And when you read about where the doppers originally come from that south africa mm-hmm. they're able to do this in five to six months which is fantastic yes you know but now quickly we notice our gap is on two things mm-hmm. our genetics and our feed yes yeah and slowly this has been our journey mm-hmm. trying to correct both yeah yes ensure we are getting to us a point where we are feed secure mm-hmm. also ensure that 
from a genetically point of view, we are becoming genetically sound. Yes. So that has been our journey. Yes. For the last 11 years. For the last so are you Are you at a point where you're happy with the, 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 the kind of feed that you find in the market? Whether it's um, like the premix that you, you buy, right? Yes. When you, you supplement. Yes. Are you happy with the quality of the feed that you're getting locally? I would say yes. The only challenge is availability. Okay. okay. What you find is that uh, for many reasons, if you want the very best, it's very hard for you to get them at the scale that you require. Yes. If you want, for example, if you want hay that is brachiara, mm -hmm. I mean, where can you buy it in bales? That's a challenge. So you find, yes, you'll get your boma roads, which will do the trick for you. But of course, you always want the best you can get. Yes. So the likes of boma roads is still work in progress, I think, for you to be able to get them in large quantities. Yes. So what we find is that we are forced, and I would use the word forced gently, mm -hmm. that we are forced to grow it ourselves. Yes. Uh, the same applies to Lusan. The quality that you'd require of that lusan, that is not adulterated in any way, mm -hmm. meaning it's not mixed with other grasses, yes. pure lusan, yes. then you may need to either grow it yourself or work very closely with a farmer who's growing it and you partner. But what I would encourage many farmers to do, because we're also doing it, is find areas of synergy, areas of partnership, where you can be able to partner. Yes. You know, uh, you may not need to learn how to do maize today from, you know, from the scratch. Yes. Yeah. But you can partner with someone who has been growing maize. Yes. Yeah. And be able to become one of the off takers, you know, and that will get it at a better price mm -hmm. and you'll be able to meet the demand that you require. You also, in a way, sort of guarantee the uh, sub, uh, I mean, Market. uptake for, for, yes. for, for the correct for the other partner. Correct. Correct. That's correct. Interesting. Yes. So, what what is the reason behind the, uh, the 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 very permanent structures in in this area? What I would say is that most of our decisions are actually governed by your environment. Yeah, okay. Uh, where we sit today, mm -hmm. uh, security is our, one of our most uh, what I would refer to as most critical success factors is mm -hmm. to ensure secure your product is secure. Yes. And in this case, our ship are secure. Yes. So for that, that's why we build stone walled housing mm -hmm. for our ship. Yes. Yeah. So that we can be able to put them in a structure where we know they are secure from all kinds of predators, including man. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and I would tell any farmer out there, when you're building your structures, always let your environment dictate it. You see, sometimes you look at what you see on the YouTube and it looks very nice. Yes. A chain link fence, mm -hmm. you know, with a good compound mm -hmm. where they can run around. But the challenge is always, <laughs> will that ship be yours tomorrow? Yes. <laughs> In that kind of environment. Yes. So that's something very important. Yes. Yes. So it's subjective. It's you, have to, you have to understand the area you're Correct. coming from. Correct. So Correct. If, and then, of course, you also need to look at what kind of structure will perform best for your ship. Yes. In terms of performance. Mm -hmm. So, yes, uh, you find like now we've built this feedlot. Yes. Yeah. This is a feedlot that sits on about a quarter acre. Yes. It can house, not it can, it houses 800 houses. sheep. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it has room mm -hmm. for the sheep to have a runoff. Yes. In terms of a place where they can stretch out. Mm -hmm. The troughs mm -hmm. are all there. The watering system is in place. Yes. And that gives the animal the adequate, uh, you know, uh, space. space for it to be able to produce. Yes. And to have a high quality life. Yes. So to speak. So earlier, mm -hmm. you mentioned something that is, uh, I find in the co 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 comment section of almost every video that I, that I post. Yes. And that is a market. Yes. Especially for, for guys that are looking into getting to the to this sector. Yes. They are mostly the ones that are not very sure yes. of how the market works. Correct. So for you, yeah. what works for you in terms of uh, your market? How, I, how, how are you be able to access the market? I, when it comes to the lamb mutton market, mm -hmm. I think there are two factors that one needs to consider. Mm -hmm. That is the consistent quality that you're able to produce, yes. meaning the kind of quality you produce last week is the same you can produce this week. Consistency. The other thing is ensure that you also have quantity. It's a yes. numbers game. Mm -hmm. Okay. The more you have, the more you have in terms of quality, the more you're able to sell. 
So I would put more focus on that, ensuring my product has more quality, quality. and then ensuring also that I have the quantity that's required in the market. The challenge you have with many of us farmers is that we, we operate from a very uh, lack of scale, yes, so to speak. Scale, huh? So, you know, you just want to do five, you want to do ten. Mm-hmm. Then the point, you know, then you get to a point whereby the economies of scale just turn against you. Yes. You see, for example, I mean, uh, Tony, if I was, if I only had three sheep to sell, yeah, trust me, you wouldn't come all the way from Narumoru, Nairobi to come and buy. Yeah. The numbers are too small. Yeah. Doesn't make sense. Doesn't make sense. Yes. Yeah. So you need to look and embrace scale, you know. Uh, the likes of off takers like Choice Meats, they take minimum order of 50 to 100. Minimum order. Yes, a so, month. Yeah, no, per, per, per order from you. Per order, okay. So the point is, that also informs you where you need to play at. Okay? Yes. Because everything else will start working against you. Mm-hmm. Because if you have only three sheep to take to <laughs> Choice Meats, not that they will accept. But if you have, then transport will eat on you. Yes. Yeah? The efficiencies of labor are going to also, you know, work against you. Know, work against you. So over time, you find that you, you, th- th- it will be unsustainable. Exactly. And there is exactly. a natural death. Exactly. Wow. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, you're involved in the day-to-day running of the business, right? Correct. So what exactly do you do for the farm? No, for the farm, in general, I'm the chief hatman. Yes. Okay. Mm-hmm. Here we work as a team. Mm-hmm. We have. Uh, different what i would call different strategic business yes. units mm-hmm. headed by different managers yes. who run each of those units now in a way that we all sit down have team meetings yes. and discuss what the out possible outcomes are or what we would like to be the desired outcomes yes so as a chief herdsman my role runs all across yes be it breeding mm-hmm. uh be it proper hard husbandry mm-hmm. be it on the health side of the of the business yes but at the same time we have people now we have like a uh qualified vet who runs the vet side of it yes we have a well vast person who runs who's our chief breeding and feeding officer yes that's what we call yes. that particular position mm-hmm. and now with me as a chief herdsman, mm-hmm. uh, we are able now to, you know, run the business the way it should. Okay. Yes. So in, ter- in terms of uh, personnel that you have in, uh, in your farm, eh? so when, when you're hiring, what are you looking for? There are certain qualities that uh, we look out for. Mm-hmm. One, we need to ensure that the person is, has high standards of yes. discipline, Mm-hmm. Secondly, it's trainable, mm-hmm. and most importantly, honesty runs across. Yes. Yeah. Those are some of the values we look at. Uh-huh. Uh, and here at the farm, we embraced training, mm-hmm. continuous programs in training, mm-hmm. whether we need to bring in people from outside in terms of industry experts, just to take us through yes. some of the key issues that will make our farm not only produce, but be able to perform competitively out there in the market. Yes. So it's important, mm-hmm. every farmer out there, mm-hmm. that you work on a training program. Yes. I hear many farmers say, what if I train the guy mm-hmm. or the lady for that matter uh-huh. and they leave? <laughs> but again, what if you don't and they stay? Yes. Hey, it can even be And, and then again, now you're struggling. Yes. yes. Yeah, so yes. On, uh, on, on the 23rd, 23rd on 24th, yes. you're looking forward to also seeing uh, workers from other, exactly. other farms exactly. brought to, to seeing other farm managers yes. come in, seeing yes. stockmen come in, yes. seeing farm owners show up. Yes, you know, and we just come and share. It's 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 more of a platform where you network. Mm-hmm. You'll not only get the information, but you'll also be able to network with other farmers. Yes, which is very key in this industry. Yes, yes, and you get get contacts. Correct from either side. Eh? Correct suppliers and uh, yes. Okay. Yeah. So. Ben, yes. again, thank you so much for oh. the opportunity to come and witness uh, what you're doing here. It's wonderful. You're more than welcome, Tony. And, uh, I'm looking forward to even engaging more. Yes. And uh, I remind uh, the viewers, wherever you are, you are from, uh, those who get an opportunity to, uh, to come and learn with you on the 23rd and the 24th, yes. uh, to please do so. Yes. I'll leave the information in the description box. Again, those that are away or 
maybe they are not prepared for this time. Again, also the tickets are limited, right? Yes. So they are running yes. out. Those yes. that will not get the opportunity to do so this time round, they are welcome to uh, organize and plan for a farm visit uh, and contact you yes. for that. Yes. Uh, they also do something very interesting. Yeah? You consult for other farmers. Correct. We also visit your farms on request, of course, yes. and uh, come to help you either to set up the farm yes. or to troubleshoot what issues you may be having in the farm. Yes. Uh, On-site trainings, we also do them at your farms. Yes. So please feel free to contact us on the numbers below. Just let us know how we can be able to be of assistance yes. and of help to you. Wow. Thank you. Asante. Thank you. Wow. Thank you. So my, my takeaway from the visit today has been, uh, well, we can never overemphasize on the importance of uh, uh, information, knowledge, consistently. Uh, ben has been a farmer for the last 11 years, but he's still looking for information. At that point, I would have thought that he, he knows it all, but he's still out here looking Not for information, just like uh, he's all. a beginner, he's still yes. hungry, and he's still going at it. So uh, we ne never, it's never enough. Correct. Right? Okay, yeah. thank you, man. You're more than welcome. Kaheri. Asante sana. <laughs>